Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of topics involving APIs and request throttling. So maybe you've created an API before and you've thought to yourself, how can I reasonably limit the number of requests that my end users are allowed to make? So let's say that you offer the ability to process uh, a certain piece of data or a certain type of data and your, your users can make a request to it. So in this case, I have a, a type of data that's just, I take in numbers and I tell you whether the numbers even or odd. It's a very simple contrived example, uh, but you know, I have this. And let's say this is actually a really expensive calculation on my part. I don't really know my numbers that well. Uh, so it takes me forever to figure out if a number is even or odd. So I really only want to allow, let's say five requests per minute. How do we do that? Well, there's a, a tool we can use for that. Uh, it's called Rack Attack that'll allow us to throttle the requests if it gets beyond like a set threshold, which we can of course define ourselves and arbitrarily configure. Uh, so that's one instance of where you might want to throttle this. In in another case, you might want to take a look at like some some bad actor prevention. Maybe you know there's like a known list of IP addresses that are just constantly causing you a headache. Maybe you just don't even want to allow traffic from there. For a lot of these things, we'll be using a gem called Rack Attack pretty popular solution for this. Uh, and it's gonna allow us to do a lot of the throttling. Now, the other side of this is, uh, let's say you have some users where you want to uh, allow them to process data beyond however much you're throttling. And in that case, you can do something, and I think OpenAI does a pretty good job of explaining this uh, somewhere, I can't remember where it is, uh, but they effectively allow you to, right here, do batch requests. So you might still only send one request per minute, but that one request has like 10 numbers in it, right? So you can see over here, uh, this is technically one request that I sent to the API, but it has three different numbers inside that one request. So although my server in this case has a limit of five requests per minute, I could pretty much uh, process an arbitrary number of numbers by just batching them together, which sounds complicated, but at the end of the day, you're just sending an array to like the API endpoint, it's just processing the array. So that's sort of a way that we can work around or circumvent those. Uh, but again, because the server has to implement the batching, the server ultimately has uh, the authority and the control to configure this as needed. So let's say I want to allow batching, but I only want to allow it up to like five requests in a batch. And I can make sure that there's only five numbers and I only process five numbers. If there's more, maybe I throw an error or only process the first five, which actually I, I learned while doing this video or while preparing for this video that uh, I think the batch limit for OpenAI is like 20 requests or something. So they do give you the ability to batch your requests, but they also like limit the maximum number you can batch at a time, which makes sense because you don't want to just blow up the servers with your traffic. Uh, you know, no one person is more important than everyone else. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at how to implement this. We're gonna start by implementing the server, which is gonna be doing the throttling, and then we're gonna implement a client uh, just to see sort of how we could do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop both of these. I'm actually gonna exit out of the client one. So we're just gonna CD out of here, and then we'll do a uh, make dir for the video, CD into the video, and I'll do a code dot. We're just gonna have one VS Code instance open here for both of these to sort of save ourselves uh, some headache. So let's start by creating the server. We'll say Rails new server. We'll pass it the API flag. That'll go ahead and create uh, the API for us, which is gonna work as our server. Inside of this server, uh, we're pretty much just gonna come into our gem file. You can, of course, if you want to, uh, uncomment the rack cores gem. It's gonna allow you to do some uh, some like you know flagging of IPs, making sure that you only allow certain IPs for your cross origin resource sharing. Uh, but really the gem we're after here is gonna be the rack attack gem. And then once you've done that, we can CD into whatever this project was called, CD into server. And then we can do a uh, bundle command to install the rack attack gem. Now in some cases, the rack attack gem might already be included and set up. Uh, but all you really have to do is, uh, you know, include it in your gem file, come into your config, your initializers, right click new file. Uh, and then in here, I have to check my notes. I think it's just rack attack. Yeah, so it's gonna be a rack underscore attack dot rb. And then if you go through the readme in the rack attack uh, GitHub page, you'll see the section on throttling here. Effectively, all you have to do in here, they do have like examples that you can just copy from, but I'll just show you what my very basic config for this looks like. We just create a class for rack attack and we tell it that we want to throttle. So we say, I wanna throttle, and then I want to throttle requests by IP and then I wanna give this a 
limit, and this is like your, your maximum amount that you'll allow in a set period. I'll say a limit of five requests. And then for the period, I'll just set this to five dot minutes. So this is gonna allow us to uh, set this up in a way where uh, every, every five minutes, you're allowed to make five requests. And then we can just do request. And, and then in here, all we wanna do is say request.ip. This will allow us to filter by our IP. We can then come down here and we can say, uh, what is it, rails.application.config.middleware.use rack attack. You can of course put this in your config file or something, uh, whatever works for you. So this will work for our IPs, but we do wanna make sure that we're doing a rails dev colon cache to enable caching on the server, uh, cause you need to like store the IPs somewhere, right? So we're gonna cache them, which is gonna allow us to keep track of these. We can now go ahead and I'm gonna hit, what is it like alt shift plus to open this up in a second terminal. Now, before we test this, uh, we're gonna want to create our controllers or sorry, our controller. So for this, all we really want is a very simple controller that we can uh, set up to do some requests to. So I'll say Rails G controller, hold F11. Uh, Rails G controller, it's gonna be uh, API colon colon V1 colon colon numbers, which is gonna allow us to just uh, put this into some modules for us, just right out of the box. And then we can come over here, let's start in our config routes file. Uh, in our routes, we're gonna want to set this up so that uh, we already have those namespaces for us. So we'll just come up here and I'm just gonna copy and paste this so you don't have to watch me type it. Namespace API, namespace V1, simple enough. So that gets us into the API colon colon V1 stuff. Then we get a, do a git request for numbers slash single slash colon number. And that takes us to the numbers controller single action. Then we have a post to the numbers batch, which takes us to numbers batch. So basically this will allow us to go to like, oops, wrong language, uh, local host port 3000, oops, slash API slash V1, numbers single and three to get back uh, a response of like odd, right? This one's gonna allow us to uh, basically uh, send like send a whole array, get back uh, an array of odd slash even. So that's what these two requests do. You can of course change these how you want to. I'm just making a very simple example here. So let's go over to our controller. So server, app, controllers, API v1, numbers controller. And then in our numbers controller, we're gonna want to configure this a bit. We'll create the single action first. It's gonna look something like this. Uh, not the best code, but it gets the job done. So we say numbers, params, number two I, we get the single integer, we render some JSON, has the number and a type inside of it where the type is whether the number is even or not. If it's even, it returns even, otherwise it returns odd. Now we're gonna do something similar for the batch one, but it's just gonna have three lines of code. We're just gonna map these, then we're gonna do our results with another map where we just map it to even and odd, depending on if the number is even, of course, and then we just return the results for that. That's gonna allow us to handle both of these. And now we should be able to test this. So let's go ahead and let's do a Rails S, start our server. And we can come over here to the second console. And if I uh, hit the up arrow a couple times, we can just test one of these real quick. So I'll come over here. We'll type curl localhost port 3000, cause that's where we're running this on. API v1 numbers, that takes us to our, our controller, then the slash single, and then whatever number we wanna test. In this case, I wanna see if three is odd or even. We can run this, you can see over here, uh, create tables, schema migrations, whatever. Uh, and then down here we see number three, we get back three is type odd. So let's try that again for like number two. Now you can see after that first uh, check, we're now good to go. So we can see down here, this is gonna be two. And now I'm just gonna try this a couple more times. So that should be number five. And now if I continue to do this, you'll see that I'm just seeing retry later. So I can no longer just sit there and continuously hit the API. So now we're successfully throttling this and this will reset after our timer is over. So that's good for that. Uh, let's go ahead, let's start our server again. And instead of doing a single one, we're gonna try to do uh, multiple. So for this, I have to find my multiple request. It's gonna look something like this. Uh, so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna paste this in. So it's gonna be curl dash capital X post. So our post request type dash H, this is our content type, which is gonna be your application slash JSON. And then our D, we're gonna have a numbers uh, list of one, two, three, and four. And this is gonna go to our batch endpoint, okay? So all of this together should allow us to send this request off. We get back that the number one is of type odd, the number two is of type even, three is of type odd, four is of type even. And if I run this a couple times, 
uh, we can see I can run this like five times again before I get throttled. But within that five uh, request period, I've technically processed like how many requests is this? Four per. So this is 20 numbers that we've processed in our five request window. So that's sort of how we can do the batching. But it's important to note that in this case, in this specific case with how I've built this, uh, doing a normal request and doing a batched request requires specific knowledge of the end user, right? This isn't something that's like intuitively obvious to the casual observer for how you would do this. Uh, this is something where you would have to define this in your API somewhere. And you could see here the way that this is handled is uh, you know, in the open AI, they, they literally just tell you, hey man, if you wanna do it like this, uh, you need to do it uh, with a uh, list of strings to the prompt parameter instead of a single string. So in their case, they have a single endpoint where you have to pass in a list as opposed to a single string, but it's still gonna change how you're doing that. You wanna make sure you're informing the users for how to do this. In my case, I would have to say this has a separate endpoint, et cetera, et cetera, but you get the idea. So here we can check like an example with batching uh, where they just have like a set of, of things that they're you know putting into a list uh, and then they're printing whenever they get back. Okay, so that's effectively how the server can be set up. Now let's take a look at how we would set up a client for this real quick, which shouldn't be too bad. Uh, of course, I always say that and then we end up sitting here for God knows how long. I'm gonna go ahead and do a Rails new, uh, I'll call it client, and then we can just CD into the client to go ahead and set that up. What we're gonna do for the client is we're just gonna have it uh, like communicate with our server whenever we create like a new object in our CRUD scaffold. So we'll just create it like a way to enter numbers or something like I have here. And then whenever we enter the numbers in the input in the form, the response will come back with whatever the server thinks we should, we should have. So I'm gonna CD, or I guess we're already in here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just close the server. So first thing we wanna do is we want to generate a scaffold. So I'll hit Rails G scaffold, I'll hit the up arrow key, and then we'll just generate a number request uh, model with an input of type string, because we're gonna have this be comma separated and a response of type text. Go ahead and run this. It'll generate our scaffold for us. Now we can come up here to our client, our app, our views, our number requests, and our form. In our form, I wanna be able to input the numbers, but I don't wanna be able to input the response because that's coming from the server, so it doesn't make sense to have that there. Go ahead and save that. Uh, and then we can also, if we want to, come into our numbers controller. Oops, not that numbers controller. We wanna come up here to the client app controllers numbers request controller, there we go. Uh, you can permit different inputs if you want, maybe get rid of the response input if you're so inclined, but then up here for the create, uh, and probably for the update as well, we're just gonna do it for the create. You wanna make sure you're doing that request. So after you do the number request, new request parameters, Maybe do something like response equals make API request. Uh, and then you can just leave it like that. But now we have to make this uh, make API request method. So let's come down here below our number request and just define this. It'll take in an input. Again, not the cleanest code, but we're just sort of doing this in, as an example. So for our URL here, uh, I need to tab this over because my formatter is really upset with me. Uh, we're gonna have a URI, which is gonna take us to localhost port 3000 slash API slash V1 slash numbers. Then we're gonna say, all right, for our numbers, we need to get the numbers from our input. So we'll say numbers is equal to input.split, split the string by a comma and then map that, making sure to strip whatever you need to. And then we can just check the length on this. If the length is one, so we'll say if length is one, else end. So if the length is one, we want to say the uri.path plus equals uh, and singles slash, uh, and then we can do like uh, either number zero or we can just say numbers dot first, because it's only gonna be one long, we're good there. And then we're just gonna do something like response equals net colon colon HTTP dot get, and then for the URI. And I think because we're doing this, we're probably gonna have to come up here and say require the net slash HTTP. Uh, and then we can come down here and we're good. Next, if we get more than one number, so we have multiple numbers, we just say URI dot path plus equals batch, response is equal to net colon colon HTTP, Post form, URI, uh, numbers, we'll make this an array, oops, an array, uh, numbers, and then we want to get back the body from this request because in this case, our body is gonna have the array itself inside of it. It's gonna be formatted a little bit differently. And then at the end here, we can just return the response. Again, not the cleanest code, but bear with me. Uh, and now I think if we just go ahead and we run this with a Rails S, uh, and we wanna run this on a different uh, port, so we're gonna say dash P 3001, this one's already running on port 3000, so we'll run the client on 3001. 
We can then come over here to localhost port 3001 slash number requests, run our pending migrations. And now we can do a new number request. We'll put in the number seven and I'll clear the server console so we can see stuff happen. We'll click create number request. You can see here, started Git for this. Uh, and then this gets updated, but our response isn't coming through, which means we probably have to come in here and actually set this response. That's my bad. I totally forgot to do that. So what we'll do is we'll just say uh, at number uh, or at number underscore request dot response is equal to response. We can come over here, new number, put in like I don't know eleven, clear the server again, click create number, and then you can see right here we get an input of eleven, and our response, which we get from our server, is eleven with a type of odd. Let's go ahead and let's try this with like multiple numbers: uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, 10, 11, obviously more than we could possibly do on our own. But if we click create number request, you can see all of those work. We get back all of the results as expected. And now let's go ahead and let's just try to, I don't know, get this throttled by typing in a bunch of these. And then at some point we should hopefully start to get an error. And then at that point you would want to, from your client side, handle this error somehow. So maybe if your response is retry later, uh, oops, uh, if it's retry later, you handle that some other way. But that's ultimately gonna be up to however the user uh, or however your client wants to use your API. So uh, you're going to have to do a check here if uh, if the response is retry later. So like if, uh, I don't know, if response is retry, is retry later, uh, I don't know, retry in five minutes, right? And then you're going to have to set up some kind of logic for this, which like you would have a custom job maybe and then that job would run in five minutes to try again. And that's gonna be where you wanna get into the topic of like exponential fall off. So maybe, uh, cause it, it really depends on the error. In this case, you you know that you've been throttled. So you probably can just retry in five minutes, but maybe you're getting an error because the service is down. And in that case, you wanna like try again sooner, but then each time when you try, you want to exponentially increase the amount of time you're waiting between those requests until you hit a certain number of requests. So maybe your uh, first uh, try is five seconds later, uh, then five minutes later, one hour later, if we've tried three times, give up. Something like that, so that you're not flooding the API with all of those requests, but that's again gonna be something that the clients are gonna be more responsible, uh, responsible for as opposed to you as the server. You as the server, you just wanna make sure that you're not flooding your application with all of these, these noisy requests. But yeah, hopefully this was uh, interesting. It's just something that I, I thought I'd cover because I was looking at uh, a couple articles recently that were talking about like exponential fall off. And I was like, oh, well, I should probably cover some kind of like throttling of responses for APIs. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this was interesting and helpful. If you wanna see something on like exponential fall off and how you'd implement that, or if you want like a dedicated rack attack tutorial, feel free to let me know in the comments. For now, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.